I run away I think I'll go back to that place I stayed Play on the server the time shot way Hello people, it's Poet! And I'm back on time shot in the nether as you can see. And what have I been doing here? I've been gathering glowstone. Uh, I gotta say though that I have already died once down here in the nether. Up to 28 deaths now. Which is still a lot lower than some people. Especially those who play uh, often. But... Gathering glowstone, as you can see, I've got quite a bit now. I've been using the silk touch pick that I stole from Holdfast when he left. Smooth too. And it's been working great. Silk touch is, of course, the best way of gathering glowstone because you always get four pieces. Um, what else? What else? What else? I think that's about it. I'm just kind of trying to make my way back to the spawn the hub, the nether hub, and is this the way? Like, I am so lost. I, I've been so lost for quite a while, but I know the coordinates generally. I think I'm supposed to be going kind of in that direction, and I just found this a uh, little bit of uh, dirt here, so that kind of tells me that at least I'm in a place where civilized people were at one point in time. Um, of course, the world download should be long out by the time you see this episode. Uh, but by the time I'm recording this, I haven't been able to build basically anything yet. I don't really remember what was built and what wasn't since the last world download. I'm kind of thinking that that giant circular glass thing that I have in the donor room wasn't built. But I could be wrong. Is this the way? I have no idea. No. I can't get anywhere from there. Ugh, I hate being lost in this nether. Oh! Nope. I thought for a second I saw a tunnel that led through that someone had made. Nope. So that tells me that I went completely the wrong direction. Ah! Look at that. More dirt! Dirt's good. It means that someone was down here somewhere, somehow, some way, some why. Uh, I actually look at that. There's a. You can barely see it, but there's actually a netherrack bridge, netherrack pillar, so to speak. So I got to get all the way down there somehow. Curious how I do that. Um. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about something a little more on the serious side of things. Sometimes I have more kind of casual chatting, inspirational chatting, and things like that. But today I wanted to talk about something that was a little bit more serious. Um, and it relates to this thing that's been going on for a few months now, about five months now or so. Especially in the YouTube community. And this is... Uh, almost exclusively in the YouTube community, as a matter of fact. I don't have feather falling, do I? No. Uh, ah, here we go. Maybe I can get down this way. So anyway, in the YouTube community, um, especially on, in the vlogosphere, like I, I group YouTube into two different groups. It's basically the, the vloggers and then everyone else. <laughs> like people posting home videos maybe is, is like the vlog side. People who show their face and are known on their face value. That's the vlogosphere. People like me who like I'm more known for my voice and for my content. That would be the other half. Like someone who might do movie reviews or game reviews or you know things of that nature. They're the other half. How do I get down? Uh, maybe, oh, maybe that way. Hmm. But anyway, in the vlogosphere, the vlog world, there's been something going on um, where several YouTubers have actually been kind of outed or exposed, if you will, for being uh, sexual predators 
which is a really, really scary thought um, that this is actually something that is going on. And I was reading up on it, and it, it was kind of staggering just how just how frequent it was, like how how common it was. You know what? I'm just gonna pill her down. That's how we'll do it. Um, but yeah, basically, like once you start reading the list of people who were outed, the list is huge. The list is just absolutely staggering, which is a very sad thing. Um, it doesn't say much for the YouTube community, unfortunately. Um, and to give you a background on what's going on, so that you can understand, it's basically... Whoa! Uh-oh! 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 Crap! Stop that! Stop it! How come I cannot actually... Oh, man. I think I'm gonna die. Um, coordinates. Screenshot. Here we go. Goodbye, cruel world. Oh, no! Stuff flew off the edge! 314, negative 82. Ah, lava. The lava moves so fast in the nether. Ah. Okay, well, it won't despawn while it's in the nether. Anyway. Basically... Actually, I'm going to have to grab some food from Huck's house, I think, so I can make that trek again. Because 318 in the nether is actually pretty far. Um, anyhow. What happened, to give you guys a background, is that there are a lot of girls, some some boys actually too, but a lot of girls who are coming forward and saying, you know, I was a fan of so-and-so YouTuber or I was like I was making videos with so-and-so and this is what happened to me and their stories of basically girls who have been taken advantage of by these guys um, often manipulated by their their celebrity status their social status, so to speak. Um, what do I want here? I just want something quick to jump into the nether and not get killed instantly. Smite 4, Fire Aspect 2. That's actually a decent, decent thing. Whatever, I'll just wear that for now. Borrowing all this from Huck. I'm going to grab a bow and some arrows. I'm going to grab a stack of dirt because I might need to pillar. Where's this food? Come on. Sorry. I'll get to the talk in a second. I just... I really want to... You know what? He's got an entire thing of food. His whole field is food. Oh, I think he has his food chest out here. That's right. Yeah, here we go. Um, of course. No wheat or anything that's really sustainable. Okay. Here's what we'll do. But anyway. There are a bunch of YouTubers out there who are taking advantage of their followers, of their fans, of people that trust them. People who, I guess, assume also that, you know, since these guys are public figures, they're not going to do anything that's, you know, not on the level, that I can trust this guy, that he's going to be an okay guy, and these girls are, I guess, kind of lulled into that false sense of security, um, they think that they're in love, they think that they can trust this guy, and they completely get taken advantage of, and like I said in the beginning, once you see the the sheer number of of instances not just like one individual did six or seven different acts which actually is a thing too um, it's more like 20 different individuals did a bunch of different things and it's it's kind of sickening in that sense 
Um, often these girls are underage, which is the worst part of it. And essentially what happens is they meet up at a convention or, you know, it's, it's kind of like, say you know this guy who has a million subscribers. No, even, even like a guy my size, 100,000 subscribers, or even smaller, whatever. It's someone that you know, it's someone that you love, it's someone that you follow. Um, and it would be like if, if someone like me started adding people on, on Facebook and on Skype and on all these different social things. And then started like taking advantage of the fact that they were fans of mine to start hitting on them and using using my status as kind of like a a, a dateline service it's like it's unbelievable that this is happening but it is happening and that's kind of what i wanted to talk about is just kind of how you know what i want to publicly put my name out there as being you know completely and entirely opposed to it uh, in every way, shape, and form. I think that what these guys have done is entirely wrong, whether the girls were underage or not. I mean, obviously, that's the most extreme and most terrible. Um, quite a few girls coming forward saying, you know, I was only 15. I told him multiple times that I was only 15. He still proceeded to hit on me repeatedly. Um, making inappropriate gestures, and even going so far in some cases as to having intimate relationships together when, you know, these are sometimes 20-year-old, 25-year-old, 30-year-old guys hitting on these 14, 15-year-old girls. It's just wrong. So, that aside, that's bad enough, but even just the fact that they're using their status as you know, it's almost the rock star slash groupie type of thing, you know? Which, it's all terrible. It's all terrible, but, you know, obviously one is much worse than the other, like I said. Um, the other side of things, too, like, that was, that's so troubling. And it's really difficult from my perspective uh, because... Like I said, I want to put my my name behind the the movement, but at the same time, I don't like the public shaming of people necessarily. Um, obviously, you want to put out the message that it's not right, it's not fair, uh, it's not you're not supposed to do that kind of thing to girls when you're in that kind of level of power when you have that kind of trust and. At the same time, it's how do you do that? If you can't publicly shame them, you know, what's the method of telling these guys that, you know what, that's not right? And in, in I guess, a, a few rare cases, these girls, too, who are maybe taking advantage of their, their power to seduce guys. Ah, uh, what was the coordinates they had again? 318 or something like that getting there. Oh! Here's that block. Oh, it's right here somewhere. Here it is. Oh, my pants and stuff flew off the edge. Oh! It might be safe. Okay, let me just put on all the stuff. Taken aside from the story for a split second. Um, while I dig downwards here. I'm gonna... Try to do this a little bit more carefully here. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Want to kill me again, huh? Like you hadn't done it enough already. There it is. Oh. That's terrible, that lava. Anyway. After hearing about it, it was it was kind of troubling to me. Um, especially since there's another side of it yet where a lot of the evidence I saw against these guys was unfortunately fairly vague. Now obviously, obviously, I'm gonna put my the benefit of the doubt on the victims uh, entirely because of one good reason and that's basically the fact that 
I don't think, I don't believe. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna try it. You know what? I hope you enjoy your new, your new pants. You big jerk. <laughs> oh man! On the other side of the lava yet. That means that he probably put the pants on and then floated across the lava river. Jeez. There's nothing else down here, is there? Did I get all the... Yeah, I got pretty much everything. Ah! Man! Anyway, at least that happened on camera. So that's something. And I did find my way back. It's up there that way somehow. I gotta get back up now. Uh, anyway, like I said, I have to put the benefit of the doubt on the victims. But, like I was saying, some of the evidence was so vague. And especially being in uh, the IT world for so long and knowing how easy it is to doctor up emails and things of that nature to make it look like it came from a certain someone when it really didn't. You know, things like that were really concerning to me. Um, because you would see this really kind of a blurry screenshot of some random Facebook thing that said like, Hey girl, send me your pics. And it would be like, uh, I really, I'm only 13 years old. And then the reply would be, send your pics to blah, 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 blah at yahoo.com. And it was some YouTuber's email address. But who's to say that, you know, I, if I really wanted to go out and and troll or harass or ruin someone's uh, YouTube career, who's to say that I couldn't go out there and just do that? Send an anonymous message that says, you know, send your pics, you underage girl, to PewDiePie plays at uh, whatever his address is, dot com, you know? And those, that's as good as the screenshot was. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, that it could be just a bunch of people also jumping in there and saying things happened when it really didn't. Which you really, I really, 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 really hope that that's not what's happening. Because that's, that's the ultimate, like, if you want to be the ultimate dirtbag, douchebag, mind my French there a little bit. But if you want to be like the scum of the earth, that's something that you would do. Um, lowest of the low. Because you're at, you're literally ruining people's lives with those kinds of allegations. And I once had a, a real estate friend of mine who can kind of relate in a way. Um, not that any allegations like that happened with him. Uh, but he was a real estate agent, so he was a public figure. Okay. Um, which is fairly close, in a way, similar to how a YouTuber is, where they are known on, the vloggers, I mean, because they're known on their face value. You know, they have their bus benches and their advertisements in the newspaper and stuff, where they're known on their face value and their name. And, you know, I'm going to buy a house from a guy that I'm, I'm familiar with, you know. Same goes for any kind of sales, but real estate especially, car sales too, I guess. Uh, things like that. You're known on your face value. And he once said to me, we were just kind of having a, a conversation, and I don't even remember what the conversation was about or how it came up, but he was kind of saying, like, you know, falsely accusing someone of that is the worst thing that a person could do because it would literally ruin... Your career, even if it wasn't true, it would cast so much doubt on on you, on everybody, on everything you're around, that you would become the scum of the earth. You know, like the allegations that were towards Michael Jackson. Whether or not they were true, you know, never really came to light. Um, but it was often alleged that he was doing things he shouldn't have. And he always, always, always said, no, that's not true. You know, 
whether it was true or not, people always had that kind of the, the doubt in their minds, which is a horrible thing, you know, when it's absolutely untrue. So that was kind of the other side of it where I was thinking, you know, hopefully, hopefully that's not happening, you know, where it's some, it's not even a girl. It's probably some, just some uh, 12 year old punk who thinks he's being funny and making these allegations because that's what was being posted. Um, but like I said, I'd rather put the benefit of the doubt on the victims and really hope that that's not what's going on, that that's not what's happening, that it is legitimate. And when it is, that's a horrible thing that's going on. And of course, some of them were very le legitimate. Um, and like I was saying, you know, I'd rather put my benefit of the doubt on them because I think you're you're a lot less likely to lie about something like that when it's something that you you yourself are putting your own face value uh, on the line. Like there are girls who are coming forward and saying, you know, this happened to me, and I I think that this needs to stop. And they were brave enough to kind of put their face uh, to the name, so to speak and sort of, you know, go out in public and say these things. Um, I think they were very, very, very brave for doing that. And hats off to all of them. Um, obviously, to the victims, you don't have to go out in public when these things happen to you. I do think that no matter what, you should be telling someone about it. Um, whether it's a, a an adult of authority or... Um, there, there are many, many anonymous services you can go to online and in probably in whatever city you're in uh, who are there to help women in situations like that uh, who have been taken advantage of in some way. So, you know, I think everybody should tell someone when they have these things happen to them. And that's kind of why I'm saying, like, I don't know so much about the public shaming part of it for the one reason that, you know, it could all be false. I don't think that it's all false, but for a certain individual, it may be false, you know. I don't know if it is or not. And because there are other ways around it, like you could go and just speak with a professional anonymously without the public shaming, um, actions would be taken without the public having to completely despise someone. Um, but back to the the main part of it, definitely, definitely support those who have come forward, whether they're publicly shaming people or not. I think that pretty well all the hatred that these guys get, they deserve. And uh, I think that the people who are kind of in support of these guys, like... A lot of them have even come come forward and said, yeah, I did it. I didn't really know that it was wrong. And because they have millions of subscribers, their, their fans are like rallying behind them and saying, well, he didn't know it was wrong, so lay off him. And I mean, if you read some of the chat logs or, you know, listen to some of the conversations that these girls who have come forward have said, you know, it's beyond wrong what some of these guys have done. And they're trying to brush it under the carpet, under the rug, and say, like, you know what? I, I really didn't know, but I thought it was okay, so give me a break. And it's so surprising that there are those out there who are fine with that explanation. Um, it's just such a terrible, terrible, terrible thing that I... Like, I can't even believe that I'm even having to talk about this topic. Um... But I guess my my whole reason for wanting to talk about it, it's been on my mind for ages now. Been on my mind uh, just because, you know, I watched some of the videos, and I'd suggest you do the same too. If you want to know anything more about it, it's not that hard to find some information on it. Um, it like I said, it's kind of gone viral in a sense that everyone's talking about it. Um, it's been happening for a few months now, so it, you'll find it when you look for it, but I, it's just been kind of a, 
I don't know. I, I just I want to be able to help in some way, but feel helpless. Unfortunately, it's a weird, weird feeling, you know. But I'm sure you can kind of you you know what I'm talking about. I just wanted to go out there and publicly say that I think that it's wrong, and you know, I I'd even go so far as to say if someone wants to talk about it, then please feel free to. Um, I'm not suggesting by any means that I'm that person. Like, if something's happened to you, like, if you're watching this and you know that you've been taken advantage of by someone and you don't really know where to turn to, I'm not saying that I'm really that person that you should go to, um, but I wouldn't turn anybody away. I definitely wouldn't. I would 100% listen, at least. Um, but there are services out there that can help, which I think that people should definitely look into it's such a crummy topic isn't it why why do we live in a world where this is even a topic where these people in power are taking advantage of those underneath them to me i think that that's just the most heinous act as a youtuber myself i'm completely and utterly ashamed of those people it's it's like they're casting a bad light on I went down there to put the glowstone in a chest, and I didn't. They're casting a bad light on all YouTubers by doing this kind of thing. You know, it's a, a select few people are ruining it for everyone else, is what I feel like they're doing. You know, YouTube to me is my life. It's very important to me. And to have these jerks, these sleaze bags, go out there and ruin it, to sully it, with their perverted acts is just absolutely I'm disgusted by it what more can I say so now I think that's kind of the the topic like I said if anybody wants to talk about it I am here to talk about it um, it's kind of a, a really crummy topic but you know what I think that the people who have come forward are also empowering those who otherwise wouldn't come forward. So maybe something good did kind of come from it in a weird way. You know, it's given a voice to those who otherwise wouldn't have it. So it's a really terrible thing in a strange, bizarre way. It's almost good in that sense that there are now people who will be inspired to also come forward and put a stop to it. So, at least there's that. But, moving on to end the episode, I'm going to get the building done. I'll probably do a little bit more building in these individual rooms here. Kind of just to finish them off. It's been several world downloads, and I haven't been able to finish off uh, these, at least these four rooms. Um, and especially since I do now have a new donation... In the Amazon room, this is what this is. Um, Amazon donor room. A very important room to me. Where we got Squidgy giving me scissors. Which I use. I use the scissors that Squidgy gave me almost every, every day. It's like some crazy thing. Like I always have something to open with those scissors. So that's awesome. These knives, which I've used also a bunch... Um, on, on the fence. The cake pan that I was, I'm trying to remember what the, on the fence part was about. I don't remember what the whole thing was about. That said, don't be on the fence about something. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember! I should actually put like a note of what they got me. Maybe that would help. You know what? I'm going to do that. But I don't remember why on the fence was, was there anymore. I did save the note. I did save it. So if I looked hard enough, I would be able to find that note. And say like, oh yeah, that's what, what he said. But I don't have it on me right in front of me. Uh, there we go. Need more signs. There we go. There we have it. But yeah, I've been able to use the, the bread pan a couple times. 
I don't get to bake very often, but uh, this was a kitchen knife, noof knife. Uh, this was steak knives. This was a bread pan. And this next one is a brand new one. Bam! And this one says it's from uh, TJ. And this one says, this is the message that came with it. <clears throat> hey, poet. This is just a small way of me saying thanks for doing what you do. I love watching your videos, and I really appreciate the time and effort you put into them for us subscribers. Well, I appreciate you guys just as much, and thank you so much for that message, TJ. Uh, TJ got me. It's, um, how would I describe it? I didn't actually look at what the item's called. But it's a peeler, a vegetable peeler, so. Vegetab, veggie, table. Peeler. Whoops. That's that's not right. That's not right. Let me do that. T J. Whoops. T T. T J. Uh, I'll say. I'll just put heart. And then they got me a. Veg vegetable. Peeler. There we go. Oh, so thank you so much. I'm going to have to get these rooms done. And when I do, well, this one's almost, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do to finish them. Maybe I'll just make them all look kind of the same for now and then modify them from there. Make them look kind of like this first room that I did that I'm in love with. At least get it to looking like this. And then go from there. But thank you. 50% of the value of that vegetable peeler will go to charity. Added to the the total at the end of the month. I haven't really been receiving too many donations. Gotta say. Um, but that doesn't matter. I mean, I don't obviously expect donations. 50% uh, of the donations go to charity. That's all that I wanted to say about it. Um, and I also have that shirt shop now with awesome Poet Plays merchandise and Time Shot merchandise as well. So if you want, like, the big Time Shot logo on your shirt, kind of... I wanted to model it after, like, you know, those those shirts with the flash lightning bolt on them, like the guys from Big Bang Theory wear and stuff, and those kinds of logos and stuff. I made the big... The big uh, hourglass time shot logo. I put that on t-shirts and I also put the time shot, the writing on t-shirts as well. Got poet plays on t-shirts and so on. So it's all kind of cool stuff on there. Poetplays.spreadshirt.com and what I also decided is that 50% of the anything that I get off of there, I get a very, very, very tiny commission for the t-shirts sold there. It's so crazy. Um, some of the comments I was getting right away were, Oh my god, it's so expensive to buy the shirt. And, uh, like, honestly, the prices are uh, very competitive to other YouTubers out there. I kind of I did a little bit of cheating in a way and looked at what other YouTubers were selling their stuff for and then kind of priced mine the same. Um, and a lot of people were saying, gee, it's expensive. But the commission we get on the t-shirts, like you'll buy it for $19.99, for example. And the commission we'll get is like a few dollars. It's kind of crazy. But I'm not in that for the money, obviously. I just want people to have cool t-shirts. So have at them. And the little commission that I do get, um, I might even say that 100% of it will go to charity. Because I, I really honestly don't care so much about the commission on t-shirts. My job is not to sell t-shirts. My job is to entertain you guys. So I could say 100% of the commissions I get from there will go towards 
charity. So far I've only uh, sold a couple things, but obviously it's a brand new shop that a lot of people don't know about. Poetplays.spreadshirt.com And uh, yeah, check it out. Have a look. Maybe there's something there you like. Christmas is coming. So, there's that. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to end the episode there again. Um, it was kind of a serious talk we had today, uh, but an important one. I think that what those guys have done is completely wrong. I am in full support of the victims coming forward and being strong in that way. Um, and just like I would be if you guys needed, any of you needed to come forward, I'd be equally as behind you. All the way, 100%. So, with that, we'll end the episode. Thank you guys for watching. Share this video on Twitter and Facebook. Subscribe if you haven't already. Do all those other awesome things people do. And I hope you guys are enjoying the world download, which will definitely be released by the time that I get this video out. Because I know for a fact that I have like one or two more Time Shot episodes to post. Maybe before this one. And the world download will be done literally at midnight tonight. So, that is a guarantee that this will be posted after. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll be seeing ya. Bye-bye.